Okay, here's some of the ingredients we're gonna be using today. Um, I'm going from left to right. Um, we have mustard seeds, sesame seeds, cumin seed, um, fenugreek seed, turmeric powder, um, powdered uh, ground red chilies, uh, and some salt. And then for the vegetables, um, we've got uh, celery, uh, red and white onions. I had, you know, a little bit of red onion left over, so I'm just using it up. Um, some carrots, uh, daikon radish, uh, potatoes, tomatoes, um, and uh, garbanzo beans over there. Uh, we've got some oil. I'm going to be using canola oil. You can use whatever kind you like. Um, I tend not to use olive oil because uh, I, I, I feel like it gets too easily burnt when, um, when I'm trying to get the stove hot enough to pop the, the spices. So, um, you know, use what you want, use what you have, but uh, I would suggest either a peanut or a canola oil. Okay, so here I've got uh, my pot. I'm going to add a bit of oil. Um, the reason why I'm not doing this in a traditional stock pot and I'm actually doing it in like a really big like semi wok type of situation um, is that with a stock pot it's kind of harder for you guys to see what is going into the pot. Um, with this situation it's it's a lot easier because the, the, the thing is a lot wider and more shallow. Um, furthermore, I, I don't necessarily need my soup to cook for a really long time because it's all vegetables so I tend to want to use like this wok type of situation so that it gets done faster because that that the width that I have at the bottom means that more of the heat is um, coming up from the element so um, now that I can see that the oil is shimmering and the texture of it has changed it's not as viscous as it used to be um, I'm gonna assume that it's hot enough for my mustard seeds to pop so in they go um, I want to say that's about a half a teaspoon of mustard seeds um, I you know Use as much as you like. I'm not really fussed. It's not. It's not that important. That it has to be the exact amount that I'm using. Currently, the heat is on medium, um, but you can see that you don't hear too much popping. So I'm actually going to crank up the heat to high, um, so that the mustard seeds will pop rather than, you know, just kind of sitting there and stewing. Now that I'm hearing the popping noise, I'm going to put the lid on so that they don't get all over the place, and I don't have to be, you know, make a big nasty cleanup situation um, but you can hear them they're getting they're, they're, they're popping faster and faster and uh, you know it's uh, it's what they do they they're supposed to pop if they don't pop they're not cooking enough um, so you know uh, you you want to turn up the heat they do need to pop and this is the reason why I don't like to use olive oil because the olive oil doesn't get hot enough for me to pop my mustard seeds um, and they end up being like bitter and undercooked and I don't much care for it. Um, now that the mustard seeds are popped, um, I'm going to add the cumin seed and the sesame seed. Now the sesame seed is optional, but I just really love the flavor that it gives. So I just tend to add it to everything. Um, so they're, they're popping too, you can hear that. Um, now I'm going to add the fenugreek seeds. And as soon as I add the fenugreek seeds, just kind of swirl it around. It starts smelling a little bit like maple syrup. It's it's a really lovely aroma. And then while that's going, now I'm gonna add. See the popping is ready. Now I'm gonna add my aromatics. So there went the onions, and in goes the celery. And I'm gonna throw in the carrot. So it's it's a pretty vegetable dense type of soup. Um, and at this point, once I add the aromatic, um, I can add the turmeric. Again, the turmeric is optional. Um, I just like the flavor that it gives and, and the aroma that comes from it. So I do tend to add it to a lot of stuff that I make. And you just want to give everything a nice stir so that everything is nice and combined. Um, you want the fat to be combined with the spices. You want, you know, you want everything evenly coated, basically. Um, the reason I'm stirring it so well is because I want the turmeric to come in contact with the fat so that it gets a nice smell and so it doesn't have that raw turmeric taste. I don't care for that flavor at all if I can help it. Um, but, but do give everything a nice stir. The other nice thing about doing the skillet um, sorry, the wok rather than a deep stock pot is that uh, 
this this step goes fairly quickly. It's, it's, I find it easier to combine everything when it's a shallow um, situation rather than a deep stock pot. I find this goes a lot easier on me. So now that that's going, um, I'm just going to sort of let this park for a few minutes um, and then we'll come back. Alrighty, so it's been like uh, six or seven minutes or so and the vegetables are starting to cook down a bit. Um, so before we proceed, I wanted to mention two uh, optional ingredients that you don't have to use, but I like to use in most of my soups because I feel like they give it a better flavor and a texture. Um, the first one is red lentils. Um, I tend to put it on all my soups because it helps to thicken it and it adds a bit of protein so it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, and the second one is the coconut cream, um, or coconut milk, or whatever you prefer. Um, I, I like coconut cream, it gives a bit of richness. Um, and I do tend to put it in my soups because I want that creamy, you know, richness going on. So, it's there, it's optional, you don't have to add it, but I like to do it. Um, the other optional thing that I like to do while this is doing its business is, um, I've got my electric kettle over here and um, I, I boil my water in there before it's time for the other vegetables to go in. Um, there's only four things that live on my counter at all times. Uh, one is the rice cooker, the other is my mortar and pestle, the third is my um, electric kettle, and the fourth is my Vitamix. So aside from that, nothing else stays on the counter. Those are just the dishes that we used earlier. They're just drying off now. Um, so now that the... Now that the vegetables are kind of starting to cook down, um, we can, you know, we can add the rest of the vegetables right now or we can wait a little bit and uh, let these guys get softened before um, adding the rest of the vegetables. I'm going to wait for them to get softened and I'm going to drop down the heat to low and kind of just let them sweat for a while just because I feel like they tend to have um, more flavor extraction that way. I feel like um, the carrots, the celery, and the onions if you let them cook slowly for a slightly longer amount of time, um, I feel like what ends up happening is that they they give their flavors up to the oil a lot better. Um, so I'm just gonna let this cook on low heat for another about 10, 15 minutes or so, and then we're gonna come back. Now, while we're here, um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about uh, time management, because um, if you sat here and like chopped up all these veggies uh, one at a time and, you know, uh, set the kettle to boil and you do everything, you know, very uh, carefully and slowly and methodically, uh, it's going to take you a really long time to do. Um, I, I never cook that way. This is just to show you guys really quickly how this is going to come together. Um, what you want to do is the first thing I always do is I pull out the spices and the oil. Uh, then I like to get my onion chopped first because usually that's the basis of my meal. Um, if I'm adding carrots and celery, I'll chop the carrots and celery. Like this, this happens first before anything else, you know, gets moving. Um, even before doing all that, I'll actually put the kettle on and, uh, let it start, you know, getting that water boiling because, um, I don't want to wait. I just want to get this thing moving. So first goes on the kettle, then I start chopping the onions, the celery, the carrots, or whatever the aromatics you're using. If you're using garlic, that's fine. If you're using ginger, that's fine. Um, curry leaves, herbs, whatever. Whatever you're adding at the beginning of the cooking, you want to chop up first and have ready. Then, um, then, I, then I heat up the oil in the pan, I add my spices, I fry them, and then I add my aromatics. And then while the aromatics are frying at, at this lower heat, um, I, I, I like to put the lid on and let them just kind of hang out on lower heat. Um, then I'll start chopping like the potatoes, the daikon, um, the tomatoes, um, things like that. I'll, I'll sort of I'll, I'll sort of build the rest of the soup as I'm going through my fridge and trying to figure out like, oh, what can I use up? You know, like I had some leftover chickpeas, so I'm going to throw them in. Um, you know, I had some potatoes, I had some like leftover daikon from when I made like this, um, like pickled daikon that I like to do where it's really finely julienne daikon with salt and uh, a pinch of sugar and um, some vinegar or lemon juice or lime juice. Uh, and it's really nice accompaniment to whatever I'm eating. Um, there were a couple of tomatoes that were starting to go soft, so I was like, all right, let's just use them. Um, I, I don't like to waste food if I can help it, but... I also don't like to waste time. So like while these guys are going to be cooking for like the next 10, 15 minutes or so, 
I don't have to just stand here, you know, staring at the four walls. I could be chopping these other vegetables. I could be cleaning up after myself. Like I, you know, washed all the dishes and, you know, put stuff away and, you know, have everything neatly arranged so that we're not, you know, rushing at the last minute to do everything. This way I have everything organized as I go along and then I'm not worried about, you know, spending two, three, four hours on cooking. This way I can just bang out a meal in 20 to 30 minutes um, and I'm fine. In fact, what I'm going to do right now while I have you is I'm probably going to just throw on a pot of rice um, because I like to serve my soup with rice. And uh, that way when everything's done, you know, rice will be done, the soup will be done, and I'll have a meal ready in, you know, very short time. So I'm uh, going to be right back after this, let's, you know, after this parks for another like 10 minutes or so. Um, and we'll continue the soup. Okay, it's been about another like five or six minutes. Um, the vegetables are cooked down to where I want them to be, so we're good. Um, and at this point, now it's just a question of dump everything else in and call it a night. So in go the potatoes, um, in go the tomatoes, the daikon, the chickpeas, the, the, the red lentils. Um, everything just goes in at this point because they're all gonna you know cook in the same amount of time roughly. Um, and I'm not really fussed about, you know, uh, whatever happens at this point because like it's gonna be fine like they're all gonna get cooked um, so we're just gonna do that and then we'll add the chilies and the salt um, the reason I'm adding the chilies and salt at this point is because I added starch um, ingredients into there so that means that um, I'm gonna want um, the starchy ingredients to absorb salt so that's pretty much the reason why I'm adding at this point and for my handy dandy electric kettle, I'm gonna add some boiling water, um, maybe about a liter to a liter and a half, um, give or take. Um, you just barely wanna get the vegetables covered. Um, and then this is gonna come to a full rushing boil over high heat. Um, once it does come to a full rushing boil over high heat, I'm gonna drop down the heat to a low simmer and just gonna let it park for about 30 minutes or so and then everything should be done. Now, yes, it does look like my pot is a teensy bit crowded. Um, I might have uh, overestimated how much space this pot has, but uh, it'll be fine because it's, um, you know, the, the vegetables are gonna get cooked because um, I'm gonna cover the lid so that, um, you know, the, the ones that aren't like sitting in the water are gonna at least get simmered uh, and steamed. Um, sorry, not simmered. And my main concern is that the red lentils cook, and that, that takes about 15 minutes. So giving this about like 20, 30 minutes on, the, on a simmer should be plenty of time to cook them. Then at the end, 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 when everything is done, that's when we add the coconut cream. Uh, so gonna let this come to a boil. It's gonna take a few minutes and uh, we'll be back. Okay, so as you can see, we have something of a boil. <clears throat> I would not call this a full rushing boil yet, um, but it's boiling, so we're in good shape. If you wanted um, insurance against um, the red lentils being undercooked, um, because I used to, when I first started cooking, I used to be nervous about um, the red lentils not getting cooked in time. Um, you can indeed cook them separately, and um, and what I what 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 I like to do sometimes is that I'll just cook a large amount of red lentils and just leave them plain. Um, so that I can just throw them into soups or stews or make a doll out of it or, you know, whatever I want um, throughout the week, you know, depending on my mood. Um, but, you know, I, I've made this soup so many times, I'm, 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 I've got full faith that the lentils are going to cook. Um, see if I can fish one out for you so that you'll see what I'm talking about. There we go. There's a red lentil or two. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well, uh, but essentially your the red lentils no longer bright bright orange it's already started to turn color to a slight yellow um that's what happens when the red lentils get cooked um and it's only you know the soup has only just now started to come to the boil so like that I'm, I'm not i'm not nervous about the red lentils cooking on time it's fine it's fine um you'll be you'll be fine if you just put them in together but um like i said you you do what you have to do now I know I'm going to get a couple of questions, people asking like, well, did you use stock or did you use boiling water? Um, I'm not here to tell you how you how to live your life. Um, if you want to use stock, you're more than welcome to use it. Um, I just never use the stuff. Um, the spices that I add to the oils at the beginning, 
um, the vegetables that I'm adding, all these things are making their own stock. So I, I, I don't really feel the need to, you know, add a commercially made stock or keep stock sitting around because I don't have the patience for it. Um, if someone makes it and has it, um, I, I know how to use it. It's not that I don't know how to use stock. It's just in my own kitchen, um, I have a very, very small kitchen, so I don't have physically a lot of space to store huge amounts of things. Um, my, my freezer is tiny, my fridge is tiny, like everything I can even show you. Uh, it's a bit of a mess. So like I have all my uh, cooking utensils hanging on the wall because I don't have drawer space. So like that's pretty much it. Um, so like everything's hanging, everything's hanging. Um, that's a fan that my uh, friend Liza's mother gave me and uh, I like to keep it in the kitchen to remind me of, you know, my friends and that kind of thing. Um, that's a painting that my friend Joanna gave me um, when she went to South Africa on a trip. So I like to keep that there as well. Uh, greater, you know, oven mitts. That's a little vinyl um, uh, napkin that I found at some dollar store. And I thought I like elephants. They're pretty. Um, but like you can see, my fridge is not like a standard sized fridge. So like I've got, you know, my microwave up there. I've got my water pitchers. And then like it, it like I have high ceilings. So I have everything stored in, in jars and stuff. But I don't have a ton of space in my, you know, tiny little freezer. Like, this is it. Like, I don't have a ton of space. So keeping stock frozen in there, like, it's kind of not an option for me. Um, <clears throat> so what I do is that I add spices and, um, and I let the vegetables make their own stock. So in that time, in that three minutes that we started our conversation, it's gone from a gentle bubbling boil to, like, a full rushing boil. Like, you can see... Um, making a lot of noise like it's getting very excited looking so now i'm going to drop down the heat to low um i'm going down to like a two on a 10 point scale um eh, yeah yeah i'd say that's about a two so it's still going to continue cooking for a while because this is an electric stove it's not gas so um you know it takes a while for the heat to adjust um but we basically let it you know just really come to a full rushing boil for about two three minutes um so that the whole thing, you know, has a chance to like quickly start cooking those lentils and things like that. And now we're going to do the slow simmer so that the vegetables can slowly extract their flavors out into the, you know, surrounding broth. Um, and at the end, I'm going to take out some of the solids and puree it uh, with the coconut cream um, to give the super thicker texture. Um, you don't have to do that step. You can just dump the coconut cream in and call it a night. But um, I like that, you know, I like more broth than... Uh, chunks of vegetable but you know your mileage may vary do what you want I'm not here to tell you how to live your life but um it's, it's just a suggestion so now you see how it's come down to a gentler little bubbling it's not quite a simmer it's a little more um forceful than a simmer i don't want you taking this down all the way to the simmer because you don't have all day to wait for this thing to finish um but you do want bubbles you want you want uh you want a very gentle boil shall we say um, so while this is going, I'm going to cover the lid, um, so that this can just kind of park for like 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever. Um, I don't watch the time too closely. I just, you know, come take a peek every five, 10 minutes or so and see how it's coming along and, you know, and, uh, stir it and, uh, taste it. Um, I did add a ton more salt than I had originally added, um, you know, on that spice, uh, board that I showed you. I added a lot more salt because it did need salt. Um, but the flavors of the vegetables were coming through beautifully, so I am happy with it so far. So let's, uh, let's return when this thing gets, uh, done. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes, and, um, if you can take a look, um, a lot of the vegetables have gone from opaque to translucent, so they're mostly cooked. Um, I think we're about three quarters of the way there. Um, the little, uh, yellow, um, flecks of red lentil are, you know, all the way cooked through, so they're, they're already started breaking down. Um, if you can see that tiny little circle over there, um, I'll try to point it out with my little spoon over here, uh, right there, that little circle, that's a, that's the remnants of a red lentil. It's re they're really, really cooking down. So we are, we are happy with this. We are happy with this. It smells, it smells vegetable-y. Um, I will not lie. It's going to smell like vegetables. And I love the smell of cooking daikon and, um, <clears throat> all these other veggies I've got in here. So I'm happy with it. Um, but if you wanted like a stronger, you know, smell to like overpower that vegetable-y, like, 
brassica and you know smell go ahead and add some garlic um or some ginger to the mix um at this point or you know sooner if you feel like it um you don't need to cook the garlic or ginger too terribly long um you just want them to you know flavor the soup um i'm not adding it because i've uh, I, I feel like this has plenty of flavor on its own and i kind of want to taste that vegetable flavor so like i'm just kind of trying to keep it as simple as possible um, but feel free to add some chopped garlic or some uh, chopped uh, ginger. It's going to give it a lovely flavor and it's going to smell great too. Um, the way to tell if the soup is done is to test a potato. So take out the biggest chunk of potato that you can find and try to cut it with a spoon. And if it cuts easily, then your soup is pretty much done. Um, and since that cut very easily, um, I'm, I'm happy. Like that looks cooked, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that looks cooked. I'm going to taste it. Oh yeah, no, that's done. That soup is done. So pretty much it's been 10 minutes of simmering on, on two and everything's cooked. So I'm gonna now take out some of the solids and put it into my blender and puree it with the uh, coconut cream and uh, add that back into this. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I put it in my Vitamix and I set it on the smoothie setting because I wanted it to be completely, completely pureed. Um, and it has done so, so I am pleased. Uh, so I'm just going to pour that back into the pot um, so that I can mix everything up. Um, when, when I'm off camera, I'm just going to put some broth in there from, from here and just kind of swish it around. So give me just a moment. I'll be right back. Yeah, see, there you go. So in case any of you were worrying that I was going to be wasting any of that goodness, um, I've, I've gotten out as much as I can. So I'll, I'll just use a rubber scraper to get rid of that, get, get out the last bits of those guys. I don't want any waste because this is delicious stuff. Um, so I'm back into my pot and uh, now I just got to stir everything up so that it comes together. Um, I find this color to be quite appetizing. I like that orange um, color that it's taken on. Um, I guess it's a combination of the turmeric and the carrots and the tomatoes um, being pureed together. Um, gives it a lovely, lovely color. Now, if I had any, um, I would be adding a bunch of chopped cilantro to this thing um, because I just like chopped cilantro. Um, if you don't like cilantro, you're free to add basil or, or parsley or, you know, whatever other herb you have. Um, but at the moment, I don't have any fresh herbs in the house, so I'm just going to, you know, do without and just let it do its business. Um, but, you know, I'm just stirring it to combine everything together. Um, and, and you can see that the broth isn't so thin anymore. Now it's gotten a fair bit thicker, um, which is what I wanted. Um, I wanted there to be a little bit more texture in the broth so that it's not just like brothy. It's, it's creamy and, you know, filling. Um, and I'm just going to kind of let this, you know, come to another full rushing boil because, um, I want the starch and the potatoes to... Uh, thicken. I want them to cook like all the way through. So I'm bringing this back up to high heat and I'm going to let this come to a full rolling rushing boil and stay at that boat boil for about like two, three minutes to just really get it, you know, going. Um, so if the flavors all have one last chance to combine, um, then I'll taste for seasoning and adjust as necessary. So I'll be right back. Okay. And since this is on the biggest burner of my gas, of my gas stove, my electric stove, um, this soup has come to a boil very, very quickly. So like we have bubbles, it's coming right along. Um, and it's been bubbling away for a couple of minutes now. So I, I've been sort of letting it do its business um, so that it can just come together. Um, I feel like it's bubbled long enough. I think it's, it's ready to eat. Um, so um, I'm, I'm just gonna turn off the heat and let it just hang out for a bit. Um, I'm not ready to eat it yet. Um, I, I still want to clean up a little bit before, you know, I dig in. Um, but this is, this is pretty much the process. This is the process to making a soup. Um, if you don't want to have this be as calorific as mine is, um, with the coconut cream and all that oil and everything else like that, you can, um, dry roast the spices, the cumin seed, mustard seed, and sesame seed in a pan with, uh, with a lid on. Um, over medium high heat um, until you hear them all popping like mad. Um, you don't even have to roast the fenugreek seeds. You can just throw them right into the uh, boiling uh, water and it'll be fine. Um, but go ahead and dry roast the seeds and um, you know give them a quick bash in the mortar and pestle. You don't want them to powder. You don't want to you know give them a hit with the coffee grinder. You just want them to be kind of bashed up a bit. Um, 
So just give it a give it a quick uh, bash around in the mortar and pestle, um, and then throw it into the water. Um, so instead of frying the um, aromatics first, um, you can actually literally just add every single vegetable in at the same time. Add just enough water to cover. Um, and just let her rip, like let it boil for a couple of, uh, you know, for however long it takes for everything to get cooked. And um, when it's done, if you want to thicken it up, uh, you can add some uh, white rice and some almond milk or um, soy milk. Um, just make sure to use the unsweetened, unflavored version, not the one with vanilla extract or whatever the hell they're adding to these things or sugar. Um, just use the plain one. Um, and puree, uh, the, the, the rice along with the almond milk or soy milk, um, along with some of the vegetables from here. Um, and you're going to get plenty of that creaminess, um, that I got from the coconut cream. Um, I just like the way it tastes with coconut cream over the other stuff. And I'm not really fussed about the calories. Um, you know, who am I trying to impress? It's just, it's just me. Um, so, you know, I'm not really fussed about the calories. If you are, um, you're welcome to modify this to your needs. Um, and if you have other vegetables that you like, such as broccoli or kale or, or peas or green beans or whatever, feel free to add them. Um, if they're root vegetables, add them with the daikon of the potatoes. If they're like quick cooking vegetables like broccoli and stuff like that, add them at this point. Like once everything's come to the boil, just add them into the hot liquid. Let the thing just sit for five, ten minutes or so for them to get steamed all the way through and then serve it. Um, because they don't need as long to cook, so it's, it's better to just, like, get them moving. Uh, so I'm gonna put some rice in a bowl, pour this on top, and go to town. So I'll be right back. Uh, okay, so here's the soup all served up, um, over rice. Um, I can, you know, I can mix it through or just eat it like a curry. It's fine, um, because the soups come out very, very thick and kind of stewy. Um, so I'm extremely pleased with how it's come out. Um, the vegetables are... In, in chunks. Um, I've got that creamy broth going on. Um, I've got that lovely flavor of basmati rice. Um, you can use short grain, you can use medium grain, you can use regular long grain rice. Um, I just have basmati rice in the house, so that's what I used. Um, and, uh, it, and it tastes delicious. I'm very, very pleased with it, um, how it's come out. Um, it doesn't really need much of anything else. Like, it's, it's done. It's ready to roll. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you'll try it out. Uh, and, uh, please leave me a comment if you have any questions and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. All right. Take care guys. Bye.